What's up guys, Kevin with Badland Hand Histories. I don't want this build vlog to be, look what I'm doing and uh, waste your guys' time. I wanna make sure that I'm giving you guys some value and giving you guys some insight as to why I'm doing the things I'm doing and how you might be able to swap uh, an axle under your truck or a V8 into your truck. So um, if that's something you're into, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have any ideas for products that I can uh, make for you guys, as well as any sort of video topics, uh, please feel free to comment below. So a common topic that I tend to see on the V8 swap groups and uh, throughout uh, YouTube uh, videos is uh, what motor mounts do I use for my V8 swap in my car? Or can't I just make the stock V8 mounts work? And to answer that, no, you cannot use your uh, factory V8 motor mounts in a truck that had a four and five cylinder motor in it. Sometimes I'm asked, well, what, what motor mounts are you using? And I say, well, I, I made them myself. Um, and that's true, but you guys can buy these. Uh, these are my V8 motor swap mounts that I uh, make myself here. I'm no welder, but I can stick two pieces of metal together and uh, I haven't broken one yet or I haven't had anybody break one yet. So. I must be doing something right. So I'll leave a link to these in the description below if you guys are looking to swap your Chevy Colorado Canyon or H3 with a V8 LS variant. Let's get this motor out and uh, I'll show you guys the mounts. That was fun. Um, check out these mounts. So when you get your motor mounts in the mail, don't bolt them on the motor just yet. You need to take them to the factory five cylinder, four cylinder towers and trim them so that they clear not just the mounts, but also the exhaust manifolds. So I've got to trim mine just a little bit more. Uh, a while back, I just trimmed mine real quick with my plasma cutter. And the driver's side over here, I got this kind of lopped off. This one's actually gonna come down even further because um, I'm gonna try and see if I can use the truck manifolds. And uh, if not, I'll just go buy the V8 Colorado manifolds. But right now I can tell that it's already gonna hit this point. So you take the mounts out of the box, check clearance on the factory towers for the uh, motor mounts, and then uh, bolt them onto the motor. So the mounts come pre-assembled with the sleeves already in them and bushings. Uh, the arrow is facing forward. This is the passenger side with the mount in the middle. Basically put your new bolts in. These are just the factory ones because it's my truck and I don't care. And uh, leave them loose so you can kind of slide this wherever you want. Driver side, same deal. I've got the arrow facing forward. It'll be pre-assembled, ready to go. All you gotta do is bolt in the three bolts and you're good to go. Leave the new bolts loose just by a little bit, just enough so you can slide it back and forth. Um, that'll help kind of position the motor. Plus you can kind of get it in place and then get the motor mount bolt in through the mounts and uh you're good to go i've got you guys in the morning to put the uh six lady in uh, kids are walking home from school people are driving by about every 30 seconds so it's almost impossible to video right now so get you guys in the morning when it's cooler and nobody's driving by every 30 seconds early the next morning all right new day uh just pulled tape on the transmission crash member and i'm at like 22 23 inches and my ghetto floor jack will only go 20. Called a bunch of my buddies last night, uh, messaged them and whatnot. I don't know anybody that's got a transmission jack uh, locally. So we're gonna ghetto rig one uh, for the day and uh, at least get this transmission in. But unfortunately, I've gotta pull the coils out of the truck so that I can get it low enough that I can set the transmission into the cross member because I really don't want to cut and weld it just yet. Uh, I want to get it located and then fabricate a mount for the middle and then I can cut it and uh, figure out where all the uh, drive shaft stuff is going to have to be and exhaust and whatever else. So I want to just get it up and in there, but because it's attached to the links, I can't take it out. So uh, 
pull the coils real quick and uh, I guess it is what it is. This old doing stuff in my driveway thing is an absolute pain because it's just enough of a grade that you can like have stuff sitting on jack stands but everything else with the wheels just rolls right down the hill. So getting this transmission is going to be an absolute blast. I can, I can guarantee it. <laughs> happy Josh damn near laying axle over here hope you're happy all right this might work 20 inches to the 19 and a half to the top of the cross member but I've got 18 ish 18 ish let's see if I can actually get the transmission on the jack in here and then up on top of this cross member. I brought this grinding table all back and it came with a couple motors that were sitting on these plates here. I thought maybe I can use this as a transmission cross member for my jack. So I got to drill a hole in the center that's the same size as the index there and hopefully the nut uh, screws on there so that uh, we can use this. It's only three eighths of an inch or so. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to drill out. Man, I got that on there tight. There we go. One eternity later. Come on, there we go. That's not ghetto fab, I don't know what is. So an issue that I'm gonna have is that this bell housing is like 18 half or 19 inches off the ground. Can't just set that on top of the jack and then roll it under the truck as low as we had to get it. So I'm contemplating lifting the truck up a little bit and then setting it back down. Um, the unfortunate part of it is that I just use one of my only jacks to lift it up. So I've got another kind of crappy Harbor Freight one that is uh, not long for this world, but I'm gonna lift up the truck just a wee bit and then uh, slide this crap under here and uh, get it mounted up. It's already hot out here. It's only like 10.30. I need a shop. One, because I can actually make a video without somebody driving by with their crappy exhaust or super loud trashy music and uh, kids walking by after school and all that fun stuff. Plus uh, air conditioning and whatnot. I've got a mini split in here, which is nice inside. And when I got the door down, but when I'm working on stuff out here, it's not as enjoyable. So if I can't get this up in there the way I'm thinking, um, which I don't really seem to think I'll have an issue, but if I can't get it in the way that I want to, I could probably just bolt it to the motor and snake it in that way. I need a load lever instead of this chain uh, that I'm using right now, but maybe that'll be next week's video. But uh, I'm going to try and get this thing under there and uh, hopefully attempt to get this thing placed. Uh, you guys are going to see me uh, get this in firsthand or this is never going to be aired. I'm going to get this thing strapped up. Um, looks like I got to take off the doubler. Uh, pulling tape, it doesn't look like it'll fit around the um, third link. So let me get this strapped up and uh, get under the truck. As low as it goes. Oh, just barely. Oh. Oh, am I hitting? Let 
tighten this guy up. And uh, up we go. Yeah, there was no way I was going to make this happen with this doubler. Would have liked to have only put this in here once. Done some of the rebuild stuff to it. And then uh, put it in. But uh, don't have the parts just yet. And uh, I'm still a long ways off from getting this thing running. So it's not super imperative that I have my transmission 100% right now. This bell has a little, or this transmission is a little tight in here. And I should have known this was going to be a problem. What am I doing here? So I had to loop it around the front and under to get this nice and tight. So um, I guess it'll be kind of fun getting it up in there. We'll see. I lied. That's about all I can lift with this jack. So I need to lower the truck back down just a wee bit. All right, that's a lot better. All right, let's get this motor set in. Just remember when you guys are putting these mounts in, just make sure the bolts are just loose enough where you can move the, the mount back and forth. I actually have the hood propped up way over there instead of at the prop because I need the height on the, the hood. Nice and slow. This motor being as heavy as it is, is just not cooperating with my, my engine crane wheels but we're getting close Dink. look at that right in the hole yeah i think the uh, transmission's a, a wee bit high what do you guys think got my wrench my bolts my impact gun i'll see what it's going to take to get this thing to uh line up all right, I gotta get this down a wee bit. Yeah. Down, is that what I'm doing? That's nearly lined up. Bottom two bolts, let's see if we can get them in. And snug up to the rock. tight but I can even move the the axle side third link mount that's not a big deal that's only heavy tacked so seems like the mounts are pretty much dead nuts I'll get this guy figured out and uh yeah not tea bag not tea bag. I've got to go source a 6080 trans mount uh, bushing real quick, but uh, for right now, I think I'm going to cut the video here. Uh, essentially, I just wanted to show you guys that uh, these mounts bolt up to an LS block, that they fit the factory uh, five and four cylinder uh, engine mounts, and adapt the new LS to the truck. And uh, you know, if you guys want to set, uh, this is going to be a link below. I've got a bunch here and I've got more coming. So can't wait to uh, see you guys projects and LS swaps. And uh, as always, we'll see you in the next one.